It's a 1990, uh, I don't even remember what this thing is. And it doesn't even matter because you guys probably never even seen one anyways. Let's get started. Now obviously I do know this is a 1990 Mitsubishi Sigma. It was based on the Galant platform from Mitsubishi. And is their attempt at a luxury car, their entry into the luxury car market. And yes, this is another Euro-Asian Bob strikes again. 27,000 miles, guys, from 1990. I've checked this thing over externally before we filmed today, and it's like a brand new car. It literally could be in a showroom, and you could advertise this in the 90s as a new car. It's that good. It's crazy. But don't take my word for it. I'll let you guys take a look. Let's see what we find. Looks kind of like a Mercedes or a Volvo or something on the front end, Mrs. Wizard. Yeah, that's what I think. It's very, very Volvo. I believe they were shooting for a European look on this car. I know so as much because in this year they offered a package, a special package called Eurotech package. I'm not sure if this car has that on it, it very likely does, but it offers a lot of options you would find in European cars. Look at those wheels guys, you can still see the, the machining marks, it is so perfect. No dents, no scratches, the paint actually looks like a brand new car. Even the windows look brand new, even the door handles look brand new. Things that should be broken by now, or should be faded, or should be showing some wear, are not on this car. It is very, very amazing. As we come along to the rear of the car, again it looks very European inspired. Mitsubishi Sigma. Nice clean paint back here. I like the uh, tail lights with the black paint stripes to divide them. Mm -hmm. Very 90s. It is very 90s. It has the mud flaps in the back that are body colored which was something that was happening in the early 90s. It looks really cool. I actually like the look. Well, I haven't seen any blemishes, guys. All I've seen is nice, clean paint, shiny chrome, and nice, shiny wheels. Let's take a look under the hood. There it is, guys. A 3-liter V6. Everything is clean and like new. A lot of the plates and things and brackets are all shiny and they still have their CAD plating on them. Everything's glossy and new. This engine had 142 horsepower and 168 pounds of torque. It was actually higher powered than that over in the European market. But as always, when it makes it to America, they choke it to death. And they did so on this one. This one's no exception. Four-speed automatic. 18 miles per gallon in the city, 22 on the highway. Zero to 60 in 10.3 and a quarter mile in 17.6. Really, it's not meant for speed. This is back in the days of distributors, guys. Here we can see it has timing belts, or a timing belt. That will be something we look into to see if it's been done recently or if it needs to be done. But otherwise, it is in very good shape. Again, it looks like a new car. All the labels are intact. If you look on this side of the engine over here, these labels from most all 1990 cars that you see on the road today are gone. They're washed off, rubbed off, peeled off, but they're all intact on this car. Also, in most cars of this era, the fuse box lid is missing. I don't know why that is, but for whatever reasons, owners have trouble with their car. They take the lid off, set it down, never to be found again. These appear to be original hoses with this crosshatch pattern. They feel nice and soft, though. So, not a whole lot going on under here. I don't see any leaks or anything major going on. 
Everything's intact, and just as you guys know, I like to see cars that are stock. One thing that's interesting is it is a left-hand drive car, but the brake master cylinder and the booster is on the passenger side, on the right-hand side. There must be some sort of a, a linkage or a rod that translates it over to this side. That's very interesting. Well, let's let Mrs. Wizard give you guys a tour of the really cool interior. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to the 90s flashback. And you will agree with me from earlier, this looks a lot like a Volvo. But let's check out the mileage. You'll see that it does say 27,000 miles in there. Isn't that crazy? And look at the, the dash, has a very European feel to it, very Volvo. The angles in here, that hard plastic dash, and nice sharp edges on it. There's no cracks up there. It's in great, great shape, but that definitely has that European feel to it. As we move down to our HVAC system, has some fun buttons there. Looks like maybe there's been some makeup marks on here, but that's about it. There's nothing worn off, everything looking good. Nothing, plastic isn't broken, considering it's that kind of a breaky plastic. As you move down, that is one heck of a stock radio. Look at all those equalizer adjustments and lovely cassette player. As we move down to our shifter, ah yes, the days where you could take out overdrive and turn it on. Yes, love those from the 90s. Only way we see that anymore is with a truck where we don't want to be towing in overdrive. I'm not so sure what the eco and power button does, but I don't know how that would give us too much more horsepower, but there is a button for that. And it does it look like we have auto moving mirrors. We do have a two-tone leather going on in here. We have a beige leather on the seats and they have a nice bolster on the side. You can see they definitely have a little bit of uh, edge on them. Kind of make you feel like you could drift corners, not with our 142 horsepower. But if you look at the doors, they've got this chrome trim, accents in multiple spots got a more durable carpet on the bottom with a little map holder down there but then we also have that inset of that lighter value as well again chrome 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 so I'm, I'm shocked in the back seat it looks like there's a split on it wizard can you help us out Okay, that is definitely not something a Volvo had. Volvo's only had maybe a ski pass through through the uh, armrest, but wow, that definitely lays down a 40-60 split. That is definitely different from any other European car I've ever seen. Go ahead and put us back together, Wiz. And as we look at those door panels, you'll see that we have more of that chrome trim, more of that ivory inset into the brown. As we slide up to the headliner, it has a really interesting texture to it. There's no flaws in it, no marks. Nobody was eating Cheetos before they touched the headliner up here. Looks great. Got some nice map lights. Again, using that brown color again. Very, very, very much an earth tone car. As we slide to a rear view mirror, we've got the old school night mode. There we go. Night mode, day mode, night mode, day mode. Very good. And again, very simple technology, but it did work. So as we move to our door panel here, just so we can get a closer look at it, you can see we definitely have lots of controls for our windows and we have a very delicate little two finger pull for to release our door. And one thing that is interesting, let me push it open just a little bit. One thing not European is there is no post. And so it's very much an open, you know, window. And when I came in here, oh, look, you can lock the doors. That's one thing that's kind of, you know, a little uh, scary. But again, you just push up, it's unlocked. But if you do that, you obviously have to have the window down so you shouldn't get yourself locked out of the car. But that was kind of like, oh no, that's kind of an odd feature. As we end up here at the steering wheel, as always, have cute little buttons for our horn, one on each side, just so you can just tap it with the thumb. But the other thing is right here, you'll notice that we have some really early 90s radio controls. And that is definitely something new that we did not have too much before this time. We've got some marks on here, maybe for makeup. It's not really anything else. Looks like that could just be very easily cleaned off. But otherwise, that's a definitely a different feature for the time. Otherwise, I'm kind of curious what this looks like on the underneath. Let's get this in the air. Mm -hmm. 
let's take a look through the front bumper cover and look at our radiator. There's not even any bugs on it, guys, on the condenser. It's just clean like brand new. It's pretty amazing. There is an interesting tow hook here. If it needs to get towed or pulled up on a wrecker, you can just hook it on right there. I do see some seepage right there. And actually, Long Beach has looked this car over already, and he says that's a valve cover gasket leak, which is not a major issue at all. Easy to take care of. And here we are again with more valve cover gasket leak. It's got onto the compressor a little bit. We'll get that all cleaned up and put a new gasket on. Another thing that Long Beach found was this boot. CV shaft boot. So we'll have to see if we can find a boot for that. And we'll go and check over here. We'll start with the brakes. They're about half gone, but they're still good. Sway bar link is good. Our strut is fine. Nothing loose there. CV boot is good there. And it's good there. Go over to here. Pads are about half gone. Sway bar link is good. Here's another CV boot that is torn. So that will need both boots there on the driver's side. The strut is nice and dry. Nothing loose there. Here's our steering rack. The boots are nice and dry there. I'll move over to this side. Everything looks pretty good there. Here's our exhaust with a catalytic converter. Everything's intact here, which is good because people are robbing these things like crazy now. Move on down. You can see there's like an undercoating on this car. It's a very heavy, like a tar almost, which is good. It's helped keep protect it from rusting from all these years. Here's our fuel tank. Looks like it even has a drain. That's pretty nice. They won't get that these days. Our rear control arm bushing looks good. It's kind of a track bar, really. We'll look at the this wheel here. The brakes are about half gone, which it has four-wheel disc brakes all the way around. It's just nice. The strut is nice and dry. There's no sway bar links back here because it's a solid beam rear axle. Swaying is really not a big problem back here. Brakes look good there. Everything looks intact, nothing's leaking, no brake leaks. Exhaust is all stock and intact. And there's another tow hook for the back in our spare tire well. Put it back here. <clears throat> no rust, Mrs. Wizard. No, this thing is looking like she was kept in the garage all of her life. Like under wraps or something. It's like brand new. Even the little duck bill or whatever they call these for ventilation or for drainage is intact. Those things are usually gone by now on these old of cars. Very, very amazing. Well, let's check the tires. So we had to get on this side to check the date code and it looks like 2017 on the tires. But they're looking pretty good. They are five years old. They're still usable. When we're getting close to seven, eight, nine, and 10 years old, that's when it's time for new tires. But these still have quite a bit of life left in them. I would say you could use these up and then get a new set of tires coming. Let's get this beautiful gem back on the ground. So I still don't know how Euro Asian Bob finds these things. I actually think this is the nicest car he's ever found. It literally is like brand new. Other than the CV boots and a valve cover gasket leak and maybe a few small services here or there, this thing's almost ready to be put on the lot and put up for sale. One of the reasons you probably haven't seen very many of these is they were made from 1988 to 1990, this specific body style anyways. They've made several other years of the Sigma, but this body style 
in North America. I'm not talking about the whole world. In North America, it was only two years. They sold very poorly, in fact so poorly that I looked all over the internet to try to find production numbers for those two years. I can't even find them. It must be that low, guys. Maybe you guys can do some Google search and find it for me, post it in the comments. I'd be interested to know myself. Some of the competition that these cars had was like the Nissan Maxima, the Mazda 929, the Acura Legend. That's who they were competing with, and it was kind of like a Euro... It's Euro-Asian. It's European look, and it's an Asian car. Totally Euro-Asian. And like I mentioned, they are based on the Galant. Hopefully they share parts of the Galant when we go to look for the CV shaft boots. And hopefully it'll be fairly easy to find. But if you're curious about buying this, click the link below in the description. You can get in contact with Euro-Asian Bob and talk money, talk the price. And once this is done, you can schedule a visit with him to have it checked out. The purpose of this video is to show you how awesome this car is. Eurasian Bob bring these cars up here. They're really hard to find, especially in this condition, and I want to show you guys and share it with you. Now keep in mind, guys, when I check out these cars for Eurasian Bob, this video does not serve as a pre-purchase inspection. It is not legally binding. So make sure you keep that in mind. If that is what you're looking for, you can contact Eurasian Bob. He will bring the car back up here, and I'd be happy for you to pay me to do a pre-purchase inspection. If you're curious what kind of tools we're going to use to fix the very small amount of problems with this car, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's so many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.